you can have the health of your dreams. We're making a series of videos about eating science because we believe that's the area where we can make the biggest difference in people's lives. Aren't you the angel? You might have heard an all-meat diet can cure virtually all of our chronic illnesses. Obesity, diabetes, heart problems, cancer, Alzheimer's, mental health issues, autoimmune conditions. He drank the Kool-Aid. No, I only drink water and eat meat. Enough of that. Let's learn how a meat-only carnivore diet cures so many health issues. First thing to remember, the human body is complex. Despite seeing that something works, scientists often disagree about how it works, the mechanism. For example, heart disease is the number one killer, and medical science spends a lot of time trying to study it. But scientists and doctors disagree what causes it. In the past, the U.S. government and many doctors took the position that heart problems were the result of people ingesting or eating too much cholesterol and saturated fat. So the recommendation was to avoid fats in general, and especially red meat. But the number one best-selling book on heart health basically recommends eating an all-meat diet. Doctors have theories on what they believe is happening, but nearly all these theories on how to heal hard-to-heal illnesses are in dispute. There are nearly countless new examples of people curing themselves of their chronic illnesses by eating an all-meat diet. But how it works is not strong science. Since we've already started talking about heart disease, let's continue in that vein. See what I did there? Continue in that vein? Bye-bye. Heart attacks and strokes happen when we get clogs in the channels that are supposed to be carrying blood to our heart and our brain. These clogs are essentially caused by cholesterol building up and slowing down the circulation, clogging the circulation. Often, some of that buildup will rupture causing a blood clot. That clot can stop the flow of blood to the heart, meaning a heart attack, or to the brain, meaning a stroke. Now, you might be thinking cholesterol is bad, so is saturated fat, but we actually need them, arguably a lot of them. We need cholesterol to produce vitamin D. The brain is mostly fat and needs saturated fat, and every cell membrane requires some cholesterol. Cholesterol also acts as a bandage in our circulatory system. When there's damage in our arteries, cholesterol acts as a patch. The problem is when we get too many patches built up in our arteries. Eventually, they rupture and cause a heart attack or stroke. One way to deal with that problem is to reduce our cholesterol and saturated fat so we don't have bandages. That's why, for decades, doctors and the government have recommended that we not eat red meat, not eat saturated fat and cholesterol. You can also reduce the cholesterol in our blood system by simply taking some sort of a drug, a statin, that reduces the cholesterol in your body. And that works to an extent, but there are problems with taking away from your body something that it needs. Another and perhaps better way of dealing with heart disease is to take away the things that make it so that these bandages, these patches, build up in unhealthy ways. Sugar, excessive carbohydrates, and perhaps some other recent additions to the human diet, such as seed oils, may be some of the culprits that cause these excessive buildups. They may be the things that cause the inflammation within our system that the patches are then trying to cover over and heal. It also appears that sugar and these other things I mentioned may cause the patches or the bandages within our system to malfunction and become stickier, sticking when they shouldn't do so. An all-meat diet keeps the cholesterol and saturated fat, which your body can use. And instead, it gets rid of sugar and the other artificial things that cause these patches or the cholesterol to build up and do harmful things. That's how a meat diet high in Unhealthy fats, like cholesterol and saturated fat, can nonetheless treat heart problems. But beware, a standard American diet high in sugar, carbohydrates, and processed foods probably should not be combined with large amounts of red meat or cholesterol and saturated fat. Either junk food or meat need to go. You shouldn't have both for your heart's sake. Next, let's look at how an all-meat diet fights cancer. An all-meat diet contains virtually no carbs. Essentially, it's the ultimate low-carbohydrate or keto diet. It decreases our blood sugar and increases our ketones. Ketones are our body's substitute energy source for blood glucose, blood sugar. Cancer needs a massive amount of energy compared to a normal cell. 
and cancer can use blood sugar but can't use ketones. By eating carnivore, you're essentially starving cancer, or at least decreasing its ability to grow. That's why so many people are fasting and eating a low-carbohydrate diet to fight cancer. And how does a carnivore or all-meat diet treat Alzheimer's and mental health issues? That's more of a mystery. It might have to do with ketones, which the body produces in larger quantities on a low-carbohydrate diet like the all-meat or carnivore diet. The brain seems to work better on ketones. When you eat this way, you feel very alert and can concentrate easily. It's like a fog lifts. You've probably heard of brain fog, but most of us don't even realize that we have this fog in our minds until we start eating this way and then all of a sudden it's gone and we feel how clear our thoughts become. Next, we'll look at how eating carnivore or an all-meat diet cures a host of other issues by removing the things that might be bothering us. Essentially, it's the ultimate elimination diet. For example, Michaela Peterson, the daughter of the outspoken professor Jordan Peterson, her dad describes her as dying of autoimmune conditions when she was younger. She was sleeping 17 hours a day, had had multiple surgeries to replace joints, and an all-meat diet was the cure for her. She had found that she reacted very badly to certain foods, and a doctor recommended an elimination diet. Eating carnivore was the ultimate elimination diet because it contains all the nutrients that you need in just one food. Similarly, Plant Paradox is a book that came out maybe five years ago, and it was at its core about how the doctor had eliminated certain classes of plants from people's diets, repopulated their guts with healthier gut bacteria, and eliminated all of their autoimmune conditions, or at least eliminated them in 90% of the people. Plants contain huge numbers of things that can make us sick or can bind up nutrients in our bodies. Eating just slightly too much of these things can lead to very bad acute health problems, so immediate health problems. But really, what we're looking at are long-term health impacts of eating plants. If you'd like to learn more, you can click on the link above for a video about this. That's not to say that all plants are bad and that we shouldn't be eating them, but it is to say that they probably have some impacts that we didn't realize until very very recently. Last, let's look at weight gain and diabetes. An all-meat diet improves those by restricting the carbohydrates available in the body. You've probably heard a lot about that already, so I won't focus on it. In addition to treating these problems like weight gain and diabetes by reducing carbohydrates, you also have the simple effect of eating lots of meat and feeling satiated. It makes you feel full when you eat a lot of meat. That makes it very difficult to overeat. Once you've eaten enough, you want to stop until it's time to eat again. Once you're hungry, then often you still want more meat. You're as hungry as you ever were for exactly that same thing that you'd already eaten previously. We're probably biologically wired to crave meat when we're hungry and then to stop wanting it when we've had enough. We can actually trust our hunger signals when we're eating this way, when we're eating only meat. In the next video, we'll be looking at why that is. And more specifically, we'll be looking at whether our ancestors were primarily carnivores or omnivores. Now, if you've gone through this video, then you can probably guess where the next video is going. But the amount of evidence might surprise you. And we'll also dispel some of the bad science that many carnivores are citing. Thanks for watching.